Hello everyone and welcome to another unboxing video. This time we're going to show you Tiny Towns by designed by Peter McPherson and published by AEG. This should be a relatively quick video because there's actually not a whole lot inside this box. Um, it's a very straightforward game, easy to teach, but it has a ton of replay value to it and it's a great family kind of low-key non brain burner type of game but has a lot of strategy in it um but in my opinion this says 14 plus but in my opinion you're, you're looking more like eight plus if you simplify the rules down um so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the back here real quick um you can see essentially you're like little forest woodland creatures and, and you're essentially going to be building your town on this little six by six grid um, you do that by laying down certain resources and then when you create a specific pattern you get to build uh, a specific building so obviously that'll all be covered in the rules right now we're just going to show you what's in the box so let's go ahead and break into this here so you can see right off the bat we have a rule book and this rule book is, um, it's nice and big, but I mean, this front page is completely dominated by just a setup picture. And then you've got a round overview, uh, construction rules, completing your turn and game end. And that's really it. Um, there are some variants that you can play with even a solo variant if you're wanting to play this solo. And then this last page and a half really just kind of gives you a description of each of the unique houses and the rules that go with them. So you can see this is a very, very short rule book, very simple, um, you know, very straightforward. So it should be a super easy game to pick up and learn or to teach. Um, right off the bat here, we have uh, some scoring pads. You can see that there is you know, quite a few of these. I know a lot of people like to laminate things like this and use dry erase markers, but these essentially are what you use at the end of the game to score everybody's points. Then you have six player boards. Um, this is essentially all you really need to play, obviously, in, in the, the tokens. Um, so I do know that some people have you know, created their own boards or combined games. If you want to play with more than six, uh, it is possible. You might have to adjust the rules a little bit, but there's your player boards. And we've got a stack of cards that look like they probably fell out when I flipped the box over, but these are essentially your building cards. Um, we'll get into these in a second here. And then these um, are part of uh, one of the variants. That essentially, instead of you as the leader of that round choosing a resource cube, you just draw a card and everybody has to choose that resource and place it. Uh, and that's essentially how the game works, is that when it's your turn, when you're the leader, you decide what resource cube you're gonna build with, and you pick it from the stack here, and everybody else that's playing the game has to pick the exact same resource and find a spot to put it on their board. Um, if it's not matching up with their pattern, they have to stick it somewhere. So that's where the variability of the games come in. So you've got your random resources, and then these all should be various buildings that you can build. So got some, those are taverns. Uh, these are like wells and fountains and things. These are cottages. These are like bigger factories. These look like farmhouses with silos. And these look like, well, I'm not sure what these look like, something bigger. So I think these were churches. Yeah, these are churches. So I'm gonna pause real quick and I'm gonna go ahead and open up these cards just so you can see what these look like. So I'll be right back. Okay, so these are basically the buildings that are gonna be lined up in front of you and you're gonna have one of each type of building. So you can see here, there are one, two, three, four different types of the red buildings. Um, so these are essentially the farms. You're always gonna have the cottage out and that's always just gonna be that one card. But then you essentially have different types of 
the red building. So you could have the farm and you see this one feeds four buildings anywhere in your town. Um, the orchard, which feeds all buildings in the same row and column as where you place the building. The greenhouse feeds one contiguous group of, um, I guess that's, I'm not sure what that symbol means, buildings anywhere in your town. And the granary feeds all those type of buildings in eight squares surrounding. So you can see that each one of these essentially does the same thing, but depending on which one is out for the game, um, changes could change your strategy. So there's the red buildings, and then we've got the black buildings. It could be a factory, warehouse, trading post, or bank. Um, these purple ones, which there are more than four of, are the monuments. These are actually gonna be handed out two to each player and they're gonna pick one and um, they're gonna decide which one they're gonna wanna go for. So you can see there's quite a few of these and this makes yours unique, your build strategy, completely unique from everyone else's. You kinda keep these face down in front of you until you've built it and then you reveal it and you can let everybody know. Some of these give you special power, some of, you give them, some of them give you awesome victory points at the end. Um, so then you can see we've got, these are all the green buildings. So there's four of those. These are all the church-like buildings. So temple, chapel, abbey, and cloister. And then the yellow, orangish buildings, theater, market, tailor, bakery. And then the simple ones, and you can see these obviously take a lot less to build. Well, fountain, millstone, shed. Um, so that's it. I mean, you basically have seen everything. And what I do like about this box is that it, you know, comes with somewhat of a storage solution here. And it looks like there's room for expansions because like this, this little slot wasn't even being used. This is kind of how everything goes back in. But if you're like me, these, no, that doesn't go in there. These all just kind of get dumped back in. All right, it works. Everything's organized. The lid is obviously gonna go back on, but personally, I'm not a fan. I don't like to have to open up a million bags, dump them out on the table. You can see here in the instructions that that's pretty much what they recommend, just having these big giant piles of the, the resource cubes. And that's mainly all the game is. It's bags and bags and bags of these wooden tokens, which makes it very simple but at the end of the night then, it's a pain to gather them all up, sort them all out, get them back in the bag. Um, personally, I am wanting these to be in something that I can pull out, set on the table, and everybody draw from, like a little cup. So let's see what we can find. All right, doesn't this look better? Um, what I have done is simply found the perfect size little plastic container that fits within this width and this height, you know, this depth or whatever you want to call it, and we're big enough to fit the pieces. Now, uh, I had to make a few concessions is that I really couldn't squeeze, um, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, couldn't squeeze an eighth one in here. But the monument ones, you know, there's only six of these because you can only build one monument per turn. And this is the little first player token. Um, these slide down real nicely right in there. Um, I'm okay with this because pulling this out is easy. And then you've got some wiggle room to start pulling these out. But you can see here that all of my tokens are in these nice boxes. They just pop right out. And then when you're ready to play, you just pop them open and you set them down on the table. And you see I've got all of them. Um, I was not able to get, obviously, this uh, big bag of um, the, you know, the building resources in there, but I figure this is gonna be spread out depending on how many people you are. You're gonna wanna have certain piles within reach of them. So you never know where these are going to be and essentially they all just go into one giant bag you don't really have to sort them out at the end so i made use of this hole right here by just you know squishing the bag up and then it fits right there um 
without a problem. So that's really the only thing that I was upset, but I would have wanted like at least two, can two more containers like this and there just isn't enough room in this box, um, plain and simple. So as you can see, if we kind of move this out of the way here, while people are playing, you might have a setup like, and he's like flat, nice and flat like this so that people can reach over him. And of course I will have a link in the description of this video to these. Uh, the only downside to these little boxes, which literally are the perfect size, is that I had to buy like 20 of them or something like that. Um, they just didn't come in a small enough pack for me to, um, you know, but they were the perfect size and so I went ahead and bought them and I'm sure I will make use of them again in the future. So if you've ever seen anybody play the game before, you will see that they kind of lay these building cards out in front of everyone. They're kind of chosen randomly. And obviously I'm just, you know, this is like an abbreviated version here, but you can see how when you build a tailor, you just reach in and you pull this out. And when everybody's cleaning up, they just throw them back in these little bins, you close them up, and then you just, bam, drop them back in the box. So simple. Um, really keeps the game clean, um, especially since it's a game where everything, everything about this game is just these little wooden tokens. Um, so there you go. That's my quick and super quick storage solution for Tiny Towns. Again, check the link in the video description below for a link to these boxes that can be purchased on Amazon. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure you uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more when I come out with more in the future. Have a great night.